Welcome back to the Navy Sports Magazine. We're presented by the Navy Federal Credit Union. Time to shine the light now on Navy men's lacrosse. Midshipman winners of four in a row in the marquee. Sells it all under the lights coming up on Saturday night at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Pleased to be joined by senior goalkeeper Pat Ryan. And Pat, for this team, so many times during the course of this year, adversity has tested this group, the entire locker room, your coach even on Saturday. What has been the thing that has held this group together, that fiber that has allowed you all to bond and recover from so many things that have been thrown at you guys so far this year? Absolutely. Um, like you said, it's been uh, a year packed with adversity. We went, we went on a, a six-game slide right in the middle of the year, but um, the thing that really kept us together, I'd say, were our relationships within the team. Um, we say around the team, we're about the team, the whole team, and nothing but the team. And I think that we're starting to see the results um, the past few weeks of just how close we've come and grown as a team. I know you all coming into this season really felt the locker room had a lot of talent in it. And uh, even coming out of the fall, you expected big things uh, from this team. Have we now finally seen the payoff on that because you've lost so many talented players? Other players have had opportunities to step up. Are we finally seeing the payoff on those great expectations that we thought coming out of the fall? I would say so. And I would say it's also a testament to uh, just the, the development this team has had. It's like you've said, we've seen kids step up, step up and fill bigger roles, um, which we've needed them to do. And um, I think that goes back to just how hardworking um, the scout team is really just because of it prepares, you know, people stepping into new roles really well, as well as gets um, people who have been playing together ready for the, the week upcoming. On a team as well right now that's playing so many freshmen and sophomores, there can be some dissension in a locker room when that happens. You all, though, don't seem to have that. Why Why is that? And is it because of the quality of the leadership that already exists in the locker room? I would say so. I think uh, Kyle Fairbanks and Pascal and the have done an unbelievable job um, leading this team in the right direction. And like I said earlier, keeping everybody together during a tough slide. And um, they've done terrific things, you know, mentoring, as, as well as the whole senior class has done. Uh, a great job mentoring the younger guys, encouraging you to step up in big moments, and and, uh, and helping us through the helping them through those moments as well. I think one of the guys too that really sticks out to me is, and you, you know this, when things are going great, everybody wants to be at the front of the line. You know, everybody wants to put, poke their chest out and put those four letters across. But when things are going tough, like that six game losing streak, I thought Max Hewitt in many ways was doing a lot of things to keep this team together. And in his performance, you could see he was trying to say, fellas, it's okay, follow me. Uh, I'll get us going. Uh, did you all feel that? And, and as someone who's been in the program, obviously, uh, as a, a first, do you agree with that? Absolutely. I think Max has done an unreal job stepping up into a into a needed void that needed to be filled. Um, he's been a 30-point scorer the last two seasons, so he's proven that he can lead this team offensively. And he's done a terrific job guiding us and helping us get through that tough stretch. You had to get past Saturday to get to this week. Uh, there were some tough moments in that game. And and I know Joe and I, even during the course of the broadcast, were saying, you know, this almost because Doherty got hot at the other end. You know what that's like. I mean, you just did that uh, to Loyola last week. Uh, it almost had a Manhattanish feel to it. What was the difference in that fourth quarter, though, to make sure that you all did get that elite finish this week and get that W? I think the uh, the added focus on our execution and the plays and making the little plays and, and clearing the ball as well. Um, I think we, we had a pretty good percentage clearing the ball this weekend, which we didn't have against Manhattan. Um, so we gave the ball to our offense, and I remember Kyle saying, okay, look, like we're going to focus on doing the best we can down here so that we can just get the ball to the offense, let them score the, the goals they need to, and we'll get out of this thing. So, you, you guys have had a ton of different starting lineups, but for the last four weeks, I, I think it's worth noting – that a lot of the same dudes have been out there. As a player, does that mean as much as we think it does in terms of having that continuity, that playing together, more importantly than that trust where everything then can become instinctual uh, with you guys? I think it does. It definitely uh, ensures a bit of confidence within that group. But um, we've seen throughout the year that when people go down, whether it's through injury or just they're not playing well, like the next guy is always ready to step up and fill that void. And we've seen that throughout the year. 
your defense did a great job allowing you to see a lot of those shots last week at Loyola. You had a chance to make some gigantic saves, uh, obviously. When a goalie is going like that, what what is that feeling like? I mean, does the ball look like a beach ball basically coming at you in situations like that? Yes and no. Um, <clears throat> I definitely think it just feels like being in the zone, and I think a lot of people can, can speak to that, whether it's um, you know on the field or off the field. Um, but like I said earlier, there's just a, a little bit of confidence boost that when, you, when you're feeling hot, you can see it well, um, that you can make any save that the team needs you to make. I know as a team, you know, you all met your scheduling obligation at Villanova. That game, though, could have turned your season in a different direction uh, for a lot of you uh, individually. As a goalie in particular, what's the key to just shaking off either, you know, a, a bad goal or because, I mean, I know you guys think you should stop everything, but the fact that we play against such skilled people now in this game, the offensive guys have never been better uh, in the history of lacrosse uh, than they are right now. But what what's the key to shaking that off and, and really getting to next play, next shot, and obviously then next game? I think in the moment after a goal, it's always like you said, just um, I, I can't do anything to change the one that just went in behind me. So get back to the quick you know, touch up on the fundamentals and like, all right, need to shift my positioning or focus on exploding the ball and resetting and making sure that you go out and save the next shot. And then similarly, in between weeks, just focusing on the basics, the fundamentals, step into the ball well, exploding to the ball, getting your hands there um, and focusing on the clearing games too, I've always I've found is, is a good way to kind of restore that confidence out there um, after a goal as well. You've, you and I've had, the chance to have several conversations through the years here a week like this is it like any other week or do, do you do you really know indeed who's on the marquee and, and how big of a week it is it, it's, a, it's a huge week there's a certain buzz uh, around the team and around the program um there's there's nothing like it i mean because i mean we talk about how you know, this rivalry, people talk, I mean, there's sports around the country where everybody gets into the football rivalry or the basketball rivalry like Carolina and Duke. There are very few institutions where every sport is a rivalry. Is that what really separates Army-Navy from just about every other rivalry, certainly within college sports? I would say so. It's two um, pretty storied programs, at least in, in our sport, and two very successful um, athletic departments all around who competed with each other for, for years on end. And um, I think it certainly is just the um, the nature of the two schools as well, competing against each other in college and then obviously working together um, afterwards, I think makes for a you know, school-wide rivalry that's, that's unrivaled. I'll, I'll let you out on this. The fact that you're finally coming to the end of this journey a little bit, how are you able to separate what can be a distraction, the final few weeks of being a student at the Naval Academy, all that's required of you, obviously, to make sure you walk across the stage. But at the same time, trying to make sure that you and your teammates have every opportunity to play until Memorial Day, which is still available to you all on the schedule. Absolutely. I think um, just compartmentalizing the school side and getting what you need to do on that sphere to get it done and kind of get away from it. And then investing everything that you can possibly can into the lacrosse world. Um, as soon as it hits about just about three o'clock, um, it's lacrosse time. And I think we all share that, that idea. Um, and we're ready to work and fight for more playing time and more time together as a team. Awesome job, big fella. Continued success to you and your mates. Let's get number five in a row coming up on Saturday. We'll see you Saturday night. Absolutely. Thank you.